Okay, welcome to bonus content. This is a bonus episode. This is our, uh, we're going to we be the first bonus episode. This is the first bonus content. Oh, I was going to do. People uh, are paying their hard earned money for this yeah, one. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're in, like, uh, you're in, this is like uh, behind the actor's uh, studio. Yep. You know? It's like the bo- uh, it's like DVD commentary. Yeah, I'm James Lipton. And so we're gonna play old episodes and then comment on them. We're oh. gonna play old episodes in their entirety and then me and you are gonna comment. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there'll be five people talking. Oh, uh, there we go. And two of them are the same people twice. Yeah, and Stav, the ghost yeah. of Stav. Stav's not here. So bonus means less. Uh, it's actually the Latin word for less than and worse. <laughs> yeah, uh, bone. It comes from it means. Well, bonus means penis in Latin. It does. It's, yeah, it's that's a hard true. penis. Yeah. Uh, and as we know, men are the, uh, you know, the rapist sex of the two. They the, they oppress women, and keep them down. You know what I was thinking about, and you'll disagree with this, but if uh, yeah, I like. Well, I'm open to hearty debate. Okay. Well, I feel like. If there really was like a huge conspiracy to keep women down, because sometimes it seems like that, like that's the criticism, not that things are just better for men, but there's like a active collusion. Like, why wouldn't we just imprison and rape all of them? I mean, we could do it. There's enough of us that we could do it. Like if we really wanted to have a patriarchy, we could, we could make that happen pretty easily. Wait, that's the evidence that you have is that they're not <laughs> imprisoned and being raped? Yeah, by, uh, where's my sl- sex slave? Well, first of all, in a lot of places in the world, they are imprisoned and raped. Uh, so, so yeah, you know, you're wrong there. Second of all, um, I don't know. Not I, here. I think that's not my apartment. No, well, where that's it matters. True. Um, but this is a kind of this is kind of good shit you're gonna get out of the fucking bonus content, dude. Is <laughs> I don't have to worry about some dumb bitch listening to this. Yep, because they they get are paid less money, so they can't afford they can't afford it. The five dollars it also a month. costs more for them to make up for how much I had to pay to get into the Cinderblock Comedy Festival. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, is that, oh, that's the all women. Yeah, comedy it was somewhere where they make white men pay more. Wait, I thought that it was just women. No. Ow, the cat just bit me. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, they they let white men do it, but they're trying to have like a diverse showcase. So white men have to pay more. White men had to pay more to submit, and then you know it's funny. Like all these women were like, "Fuck yeah!" Like m- making them pay more, and it's like, "Well, you're still paying, so you're being exploited." I think we talked about it probably on another. On the, I don't not what uh, I was we never talk. Okay, so if you don't know, there's this festival. Um, and I'm glad I can talk shit about it because none of them will pay for the again bonus content. Bonus content. We got to get a cool. Um, oh, you know what's funny? The Anthony Cumia Studios guys like approached me for real about putting Come Town on the Anthony Cumia network. Well, only if they get office space at the top of the Empire. Yeah, stable. I already told them we're we're already at the better studio, <laughs> the real Anthony Cumia Studio with the Puerto Rican rattlesnake. As your uh, producer, but um, yeah, so these girls started a comedy festival uh, called the Cinderblock Comedy Festival, and uh, they were taking submissions, which is already fucked up. Like it's fucked up to charge comedians to to perform at right. the festival. Comedy festivals in general are it's a racket. This, yeah, it's this broken business model that they all started fucking doing, and then every new festival that pops up, they justify charging comedians to submit by saying, like, well, you know, look who did it prior. Like, Bridgetown makes probably, like, $50,000 a off year. Off submissions. Off submissions alone. That's and then they don't pay anybody. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, and then they don't pay anybody. And then they have sponsors, and then it's like, oh, well, we break even. It's like, how do you break even? By you know, paying yourselves to do the work yeah, for a couple our, weeks. Our, after our yeah. $50,000 salary. Yeah, right. There's no, there's no way to justify it. It's like, for, yeah, you know, you ridiculous. couldn't, if you opened a restaurant, you could not pay any of your employees and then say like, well, well we still just broke even. <laughs> it's like, no, you're, that's a shitty business. It, it no, it's work. for the networking. That's yeah. what it's for, Nick. Um, you gotta go there and be like, uh, Nick Mullen, uh, New York City Comedy. How you doing? Yeah. It's like a trade convention. That's what comedy festivals are. So, these whores <laughs> they started their own festival <laughs> see and uh yeah they started their own festival and then to like you know uh, as, as a fuck you to the wage gap they were charging white men 
twenty five dollars to submit, and uh, women only nineteen something. Whatever is seventy three percent of twenty five is. Ooh. Um, but you're still just charging women. So you have like you're a still, fucking yeah. diversity festival, and then you set it up so like, hey, we're gonna discourage white men from applying. So we're only going to be exploiting women and minorities, and it's stupid. It's like, and if you tried to argue with them about it. They would be like, oh, uh, white male tears. And then they'd post that fucking, you know, all their white male tears to me. Who runs it? Um, this girl, uh, Corey Spencer, I guess. But anyhow, uh, Lucas, or not Lucas, uh, Lewis got into it with them over um, that thing. And then so Lewis just started his own festival uh, where he didn't charge anyone the to submit. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And he, he like put together in like two months and paid all the comedians just to prove that you could do it. Yeah. Because they were like, uh, it's impossible. How are we supposed to, you know, like put all this together? Websites cost money. It's like, <laughs> uh, okay, well, comedy costs money. You can't find uh, a web designer to make your website for free for exposure. Oh, in New find- York, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they took all this fucking money, and uh, I guess that festival's happening in, like, two weeks, so we'll see if... Uh, the cinder block? Yeah, we'll see if it's a complete failure. Fingers crossed. Well, I'm going to be outside protesting. That's what yeah, I'm going to yeah, be yeah. doing. Uh, I'm going to be raping. <laughs> I'm going to do rape even twice as much as I normally do <laughs> to make up for it. Guys, we have a uh, maybe a slight technical issue. I can't remember whether I fucking erased the last show off the SD card or not. And oh, I, so we might not even be recording? No, we're recording, but it might just cut off at any minute. But here's the thing. We don't have Stav here, so we don't have to worry about it. Because his laughs require more uh, yeah, they, memory. Well, he's so fat that he yeah. takes up more space on the SD <laughs> on card. The memory card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of people don't know that about fat people, but mm-hmm. any kind of technology that is... Like, they mm-hmm. need heavy-duty keyboards because yeah. they're fucking huge fingers. They need bigger hard drives for their computers. Yeah. Because they're... For their fa- for the fat. Yeah. It also keeps the crumbs out. <laughs> he can't help himself but eat at the fucking computer. And uh, it'll be weird to see if we can fill an hour without Stav uh, just calling someone a gay bitch and then laughing for five minutes. Really? I think that's about 35% of our I content take, as yeah, it stands. I want to take an episode and just edit it down to Stav's laughter. And just then, a super cut of Stav yeah, laughing? Yeah, yeah. That'd be so funny. Like an hour super cut? Yeah, yeah, That'd yeah. be amazing. And see how long it goes. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great. I think it's like makes the show a lot better. It makes it easier to do. Certainly. For me. It makes you feel funnier. For sure. Yeah. Personally, I don't laugh for anyone. Right. I don't either. People have accused me of being, uh, you know, retarded or artistic. No, no, no. Uh, I watched, uh, speaking of Inside the Actors Studio, Yeah. Dave Chappelle said he never laughs. So. Yeah. So we're cool. So I'm like Dave Chappelle. We're basically, we're basically yeah. Dave Chappelle. Uh, yeah. Very similar to Dave Chappelle. I, um, you know who? You know what? I did. Uh, I had a callback for a commercial audition uh-huh. this week, and so you know you go to a commercial callback and everyone looks like you. You're going for the right, same right, role, right. so that's really all it is. It's like mm-hmm. you have the same look as somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And guess who I saw at the callback for the role that I was going, which was just like some bullshit, who? like an energy company. For the same role as me, uh, uh, Aaron, the UCB rapist. No. Yeah, he's no. there. He's like checking in and stuff. And uh, how's he doing? Um, Did you well, he him? came up. He was like, he's he saw me. He's like, how's it going? And I was like, probably better than it is for you. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm doing okay, actually. I was like, are you? And he was like, yeah. And then uh, I don't know. He mentioned some legal stuff that's going on. And I, don't, I don't know if I can. Probably should. Yeah, have. he already has a lawyer, so people know that he's like, I guess, suing guilty. them. Yeah, that yeah, he's right. Guilty. He's guilty. Yeah, he got a lawyer, so that uh, means he's guilty. Well, check this out. He got Atticus Finch. Have you heard of this guy? Oh he's no! Great. Yeah, yeah, um, I have. I have. Yeah. Is he the guy that rhymes all the? Yeah. <laughs> That's the best thing about Johnny Cochran. Yeah. Is that he was just, he was sick at rhymes. Yeah, yeah. And so he got people off because yeah. of like, cool. Um, if the, the dick's too small, you can't enclose him in walls. Yeah, You can't true. put him in jail. That convinced me. If the pussy ain't tall up, <laughs> then my man, you can't stow up. <laughs> the, Gotta let him go. Yeah. Something like that. That's it is it is called the uh the Johnny Cochran, aka the whoever smelted dealt it principle <laughs> of uh jurisprudence. 
<laughs> I think they teach that class in law school. Yeah, now. at Harvard Law. Yeah, yeah. The, whoever smelt it dealt it, and if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Um, but yeah, no, I saw Aaron the rapist there. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it was a bummer about it. I thought I was booked to do Star Wars related stand up. Oh, this is really embarrassing, Nick. Is it? Yeah. I don't dude. think it's embarrassing. Well, here's the story is I get a I get a message. Well, it's not embarrassing. It's just really like I can imagine how you're feeling right now. I would, I would feel like crap. I mean, I, don't, I was I didn't want to do it. It would have just been bizarre. It would have been so funny. It would have been so much money. Is it still the same amount of money? No, it's for some fucking guy's birthday. But anyhow, somebody messages me and they say, and they're like, and it's somebody I trust. They're like, we need somebody to do 15 minutes of Star <laughs> Wars material at Anna Winter's birthday party. The, for the, a lot of cum boys who probably don't know who that is. The, that's the editor-in-chief of Vogue. Of Vogue She's yeah. the mean bitch from Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. So that character is entirely based on uh, Anna Wintour. Right. And uh, she always I, wears sunglasses. Yeah, and I was like, "Why the fuck?" I mean, yes, of course I'll do it. And I'm like, I don't even have the guy who hit me up. He was like, uh, oh, "I just heard you mention Star Wars on your podcast, so I figured I'd recommend you." <laughs> because did I we mentioned, mention Star Wars? Yeah, I said something about that. That uh, the oh the, the new the one, Chinese. the Chinese. <laughs> The Chinese new one. That was very funny, actually. Now that yeah. I remember. Well, it. I was trying to riff stuff out, and I started doing uh, uh, black comic talking about C three PO. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which that might even be too racist for bonus content, but that's you know. Oh yeah, black comic is the best. Of course, he's. I mean, I was personally raised as a kid on Comic View and Def Comedy yeah, yeah, Jam. Yeah. That was the first stand up. That's the thing I you're kind of spoiled by in DC. Is there's so many good like black comics where is that scene in new york i don't know probably in the bronx we used to like come into contact with like the urban scene all yeah. the time in dc the urban scene's great because it's like they're the funniest fucking people in the world oh hilarious but there's nothing marketable about that material. <laughs> there's no way dude that fucking lawrence <laughs> owens bit about the glasses have what you seen him it? he's like he's like, <laughs> He's like, I can't be no thug because I got an astigmatism. You can't be no thug with no big ass glasses. And then he's just crossing his eyes. And he's like, Where, where's the M word I'm supposed to murder? And he's like getting up close to the mic stand and staring at it with his eyes crossed. He's like, this him right here. It's the funniest shit, dude. First of all, astigmatism does not mean to cross eyes. Yeah, I don't know. It's, Second of yeah. all, that's incredible. Yeah, you he, he had like the best act outs and shit. Lawrence was always hilarious. Well, that's the thing is like I feel like in urban comedy, people are people are performing, you know? Right. And like white boy comic book comedy that like we're, you know, that we yeah. come into contact with. You're supposed with. to act like a bitch. You just stand there, you hold the mic stand. I yeah. personally I don't know you what bring to your do notes on stage. with my hands on when I'm on stage. In urban comedy, not only like you're, first of all, if your suit has less than nine buttons on it, <laughs> you're already unprofessional. Of course. Of Can you course. imagine if you brought your notes on stage? No. How fucking unprofessional that is? Oh, no way. I want to blend both the worlds and get like a, a purple uh, American Apparel hoodie that's way too big and has 19 buttons on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be the black uh, hipster comedian. The black comic book. Yeah. What's up, nerds? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Batman. <laughs> Let me get a motherfucking. Uh, what does that Batman dude, say? That yeah. dude, uh, Alex. That'd be a great, Alex Star. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a great character, like the urban comic that's that trying to rejuvenate it. his career, so he becomes like a meltdown guy. The nerd comic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! You know I can't get no damn days. <laughs> you know I can't. Pizza for breakfast? What is adulthood? <laughs> Somebody tell me what adulthood is. Uh, <laughs> so I just joined Tinder. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Tinder. on Tinder now. Look, I like comic books. I'll, I'll admit it. I like comic books. The whole crowd. So does. sue me. Um, what's going on with you? Uh... No, nothing much. All right, so we I got a cold from, uh, from like a group sex experience. You, uh, My immune system's literally too Jewish 
to like there's too many orifices it's always a humble brag every time any kind of thing it's like oh i i hurt my dick fucking (laughs) nine people at once yeah i mean i guess it's a humble brag that is a humble brag well let me tell you something you know a dream of mine my entire life is uh you know two girls Mm -hmm. fooling around two girls at the same time office space 1999 a classic yeah um please don't look up what your office space i'll never i never want that ever again what a a group sex thing Mm -mm. was it bad Mm -mm. was one of the girls brandon mordell uh no (laughs) no neither of the girls were brandon but it was uh it was just too much anxiety i felt like if i was paying too much attention to one person i wouldn't it's like whack-a-mole Right. Yeah. And there was one that I was clearly more attracted to than the other. And I didn't want the other one to know that I was more attracted yeah. to the one. So then I'd like, if I was paying too much attention, I have right. to go back and forth that's, to the others. Yeah. That's the thing that you have to worry about in a situation. Like if you're dating somebody and they're like, oh, we should. Let's bring someone yeah, in. Right. Just yeah. Like, absolutely not. Then no you, matter you what, said you're no. going to be mad. I've always tried whenever really? I've had a girlfriend. Yeah. I don't know. No, I wouldn't do it. It's just you're going to get yourself in trouble no matter what you do. <laughs> you can't. I'm, there's no way it's not going to turn out to be a problem. Just the second your dick goes. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> like, all right, never mind. <laughs> this was your idea. It was literally your idea. It's like the same thing. Like your best when, when you make a decision about which restaurant you want to go to, and then it's my fault that they don't have the shit you want on the menu. Oh, of course. It's like that. It's entirely that situation. So we Here's were. Here's the other thing. Yeah. I feel like on the podcast. I tend to say things like that more than you and Stav because like you what? have a girlfriend. That's true. And Stav, I don't know. Stav's too fat to fuck. He's too fat. <laughs> he all no, that's yeah. Yeah. I was like, I love when people like. I literally talked about getting ganked by a sex slave. Well, people, yeah, <laughs> like on the podcast. People give like feedback about the show, and then sometimes they say, "I can't tell who's who." Really? And, uh, yeah, and I'll be like, uh, oh, Stav's the fat one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the one that you can hear. Can you hear? Can you hear? That it's he's, pretty uh, obvious. Yeah. Um, that's the best part about having a, a fat friend is is you get to make fun of him. You know? I guess. That's why you should I don't have. make fun of him for being fat, though. Well, not to his face. <laughs> we do to, you, to yeah, his I face do. all the time. I guess. But he he give you know it's a give and take. I think that's fine. So we were prepared for this. We were a little bit worried that it would be kind of a struggle to fill. Uh, Are we gonna? Yeah. So we we have uh, we have leftover blow from last weekend, <laughs> which I just wouldn't say outright if this were a regular episode. But it's yeah, a can bonus we get? Episode. Could the police like find out about this? No, dude. They're not allowed to donate to things. If that's we the talk number, about. <laughs> number one rule of police work is you're never allowed to donate to charity or help anybody you only kill you're born to kill um so i guess we had leftover drugs from from a couple weeks ago and i brought it i said maybe we could do it on the podcast my inspiration was this the only known uh recording session of john lennon and paul mccartney uh, was they recorded this album? Wait, what do you mean the only known recorded? What about all of the Beatles? Post Beatles, sorry, oh. Post Beatles was uh, in I think 1974. They recorded an album called A Toot and a Snore, a Toot and a Laugh, A Toot and something, and it was them. Basically, John Lennon moved to L.A., broke up with Yoko, got a different Chinese girlfriend, uh, got addicted to coke, only wore white, and Paul McCartney came out. And they got studio space. It was them, Stevie Wonder, and Harry Nilsson. And you can actively hear them doing cocaine on the recording. There's like a part where John Lennon offers Stevie Wonder coke. So it's like, like they invented oh, the, they invented like the weed toke on the track. Exactly. Oh, that, that's an homage. That's an homage. Every time we rip huge bangers, smoke huge spliffs on the pod, we're doing that for the Beatles. Um but yeah, there's a part where he's like, "Hey Stevie, you want to toot?" And he like offers, <laughs> he offers a blow. Oh, and the music, by the way, um, is 
uh, terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would imagine it would be. Just Have like this heard... podcast is about to be. Right. And do you know that, uh, what's the, like, I, I don't know if it's like a Doors, I don't know that much about the Doors, but there's like something that's not on a Doors album, and it's just Jim Morrison yelling, uh, you got a fucker in the ass, and it's like a, <laughs> a song that he recorded. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's some Jim not real. It's like, no, it's real, dude. Where he's just like, you got a fucker in the ass. Oh my God, my favorite poem. I mean, the, the Doors music is already so fucking stupid to begin with. Uh... Uh, Felix retweeted this thing. Did you see it? Uh-uh. It was like uh, three photographs. The first is like, this is a, f- this is a drawing made by Jim Morrison when he was like uh, in middle school or something. And then it's a picture of the drawing. And then there's a quote on the drawing. Oh, man, I should have like had it prepared what it was. But it is so funny. Well. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not the way to do that. <laughs> But just um, explain it. You don't have to show it. Is, it is uh it's a picture of it's a picture of like a scary monster man with a spear and then the sentence is it only hurts when I laugh. No, that's cool, <laughs> dude. He could have been like a hot topic buyer. Oh yeah, he would have been so hot topic if he was yeah. like bored. No, he could have worked at Hot Topic Corporate. I used to live with a guy that did that. That like bought the shirt dude he's he worked his way up from hot topic just regular retail employee and he was so hot topic that they moved him to los angeles and made him like a buyer for the brand and when i met this guy he he had the best style in the world because he would dress like the joker but only from the waist up so so he just wear like jeans what yeah from waist (laughs) down it was like kirkland brand jeans and then like (laughs) store brand hiking shoes and then, you know, waist up, he, you know, he would have like a vest, like a purple vest with a green tie and then uh-huh. a red bowler hat. Uh, but yeah, he was a, uh, he was a hot topic buyer. So what time is it right now? Uh, we are at 22 minutes. So that was no, like no, what time is it in the afternoon? Of, oh, 7.35 PM. Okay. So it's 7.35 PM. We're going to do these drugs. I, it's far too early to do drugs, I think. Well, I can't stay up that long. I got shit to do tomorrow. So we're going to take a break and uh, uh, and then we'll be back and you know what we're doing. So yeah. Mark McGuire, yeah. uh, Barry yeah. Bonds, yeah. and those are just three of the baseball players. Uh, yep. that I can name in succession. That's what I would say. I know. Welcome yeah. back, guys. So we're good. We're good to go. We're good. We're ready to have any. I feel. I feel good. I feel okay. Ugh. Any. 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 Uh. Uh. Really, nothing's changed. We. Uh, yeah, it really hasn't hit us yet. We're kind of playing. Um, <laughs> yeah, we we thought it'd be funny to like riff it out, and then I started with a thing, and it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, it didn't really. Go Adam. Anywhere. Adam just did. Uh, yes, weld me instead yeah, of a yeah, yes yeah. and. You did yes well. well. You go, yeah, yeah. yeah, how about that? Yeah, how about I did. That? I had to judge one of those roast battles at uh-huh. the stand. You did this week, right? Yeah, I did this Who week. Um, Evan Williams. Was he good? Yeah. Evan and Christy uh, Cello were both like really fucking good. She's so funny. Yeah, they both did real well. The lead in like uh, matchups were kind of like Andrew Collins and uh, Lawrence something. They did all right, but Lawrence was like, got like getting in Andrew's face, which like. Would have worked if it had been, I think, two black guys, but Mm -hmm. it just kind of read weird, and then it was mostly white people in the audience, so they didn't understand his aggression, and it was just like his rhetorical style. I feel like Andrew's more of like a story guy. Well, Andrew's a better joke writer. Yeah. I mean, Lawrence didn't really prepare with jokes. He was just like, you know, I'm going to fuck your grandma, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, All right, like that kind of round, shit. Let's go. Yeah, and then like uh, it was two other guys that had kind of okay jokes about uh, each other, like uh-huh. two open micers, and then um, th- this guy and this girl who were both like new because the guy I've never seen at all. I mean, I'm sure he's like new to town, and this girl Andrea who I've seen like one time at Caroline's, who's mm-hmm. like you know obviously just new to comedy or whatever, which is fine. It's whatever. But at one point, she said something to him, and his rebuttal was, "Well, I could say the same thing about you," which in the context of a roast battle is so fucking funny <laughs> <laughs> and he just did it out of like being defensive like or whatever to know yeah what yeah <laughs> like if that had been his strategy the entire time like anytime she said something and be like you know well i know you are but what am i 
I would have fucking voted for him. They get mad if anyone like fucks around with the format. All yeah. comedies, dude. Yeah, yeah. Because me and Stav are like gonna compliment each other, but I know Stav has been writing for that shit for fucking yeah, days. He was fronting like, uh, oh, I just came up with jokes before. You had them all like memorized. No, I I I legitimately sat down for like a sip of that water. Yeah, I legitimately sat down for like four hours and like wrote probably twenty jokes for that Stav roast battle beforehand. But I know Stav fucking prepared. He's not I mean, a guy. He doesn't not prepare. Four hours and 20 jokes sounds like yeah. preparing. Too. He works hard. For a real big fat guy, uh, he definitely <laughs> works hard. You, that's the thing. You think <laughs> fat people are... Really you think they're lazy, but, uh, but you know, he's he's obviously not lazy because, you know, he worked at that, that shitty website for so long. That would uh, kill me. Oh, uh, ground floor Yeah, comedy. to be working in that place and having to, like, you know... Laugh at bad jokes. Yeah, right. Laugh at bad jokes. I mean, yeah. he does it with us all the time, which is great, but... Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why he's our friend. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, no, I mean, no, he's why, he's our though. friend because he's funny, and we're, but you know, we're... He's he's funnier than anybody else at that company, I'd say. Ground floor comedy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for at that sure. thing. Um, you mean uh, child porn time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Child porn, uh, extreme, extreme internet. <laughs> that was the name of the place. Yeah. So, um, if you're just joining us, if you're just tuning in somehow, if you like to, you know, like download. You started the yeah, I, I like to download a podcast and then just get started right about three quarters of the way through. <laughs> That's my move. I like to think that, you know, I'm like just flipping channels and I come across it. Who yeah. knows? You know? Unless you're listening to WTF with Mark Marin, you're not skipping the beginning of a podcast. Right. I had an idea. I was saying my dream. So and my cat. <laughs> my dream, it'll never happen, but I really want, if I could sell a show, I want to have a show on IFC called Mark where I just do, I don't ever say I'm Mark Maron, but I, I just act like him and it airs for five minutes right before his show and it's the same format or ever, and everything, you know, yeah. where I'm like, what is what is this fucking bookstore? Who goes to this fucking place? Well, I guess I'm here, but I'm a fucking piece of shit. So it's just a piece of shit store. And then and then it's like, coming up next, Maron on IFC. And it's, just, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Stretched over uh, 22 Right, minutes. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I hear it's a good show, actually. From I who? Been, from Mark? From Mark Maron, yeah. yeah. One of the, I, something I did a, a couple of weeks ago was uh, I woke up way too early and checked my phone uh, habitually and didn't go back to sleep because I read for like two hours from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., Mark Barron arguing with Trump people on Twitter edited. Yeah. Fuck so off, troll. Shut up, troll. <laughs> you fucking idiot, troll. I'm 55 years old, troll. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Mark Barron, yeah, so for the bonus thing, I wanted to just do, um, I wanted to just have, give Dickfield his own spinoff podcast. Uh, I haven't figured out how Dickfield comes back into existence yet. I, we were toying around with the idea of a, a portal opening to another from, dimension. From the dimension where he didn't die at Auschwitz? Well, it, you ever see the TV show Sliders? Yeah. So, um, yeah, ex- essentially, yeah. Another another universe version of Seth. And then that opens up the possibility of, like, you know... Infinite. Infinite Seths. Oh, yeah. It's uh, my favorite novel, Infinite Seth. Infinite Seth, yeah. yeah by David uh, Foster... Wallace. Yeah, I couldn't think of a cool punny kind of. Hey, we got to be on, dude. We got to be on. We're five minutes in. We got another four and a half hours to go. Woo! Where we gonna have the, to call the guy, dude? Which guy? The drugs man, man. Oh, the drugs man. No, no, no. Um, so you know, it's so funny when you do this. When you do this drug, mm-hmm. like it's uh. You know, the point of drugs, right, like after you're like 15 years old is to do them and act like you're not on them, Mm -hmm. right? So like if you ever smoke weed with a noob and they're like, oh, I am so baked, you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, shut the fuck up, dude. You're supposed to act like you're not high on weed. But this one for me is like, is like the one where I extra try. Well, that's because it costs so much fucking money that you never want to feel like you got ripped off. It'd be like, yeah. you know, if you bought like, you know, there's people out there driving like a fucking, 
you know, like a Hyundai. Or, well, Hondas aren't bad. Like they're driving a really piece of shit car that they spent a lot of money on. They're like, right. I love it. I love this car. <laughs> this car's great. It's on fire. The children are dead in the back warranty. seat. They're like, this is the best car I've ever seen. <laughs> I love it. It's great. And it's the same thing with this shit. You find, I just spent a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's. Really, I make I make nine seventy five an hour. So this is the best drug I've ever had. You got to keep doing it. Yeah. And the best line or bump or whatever is mm-hmm. the first one of the night. Yeah. And then you, then you you drop you drop off. You mm-hmm. get energy. You drop off. You do another one. You never actually get to that same yeah. point. I love the night always ends the same exact way with me in com- like complete darkness, <laughs> chewing a hole through my lip and playing Candy Crush, <laughs> thinking about all the people I shouldn't have emailed. Um, uh, do you do you send emails? Yeah. Well, you know what? I draft. I put. There's a right. lot of shit that ends up in the draft folder. And the next day, it's like, thank God. One time, I did uh, cocaine with Englishman Chris Milner. Yeah. And it was the night Muhammad Ali died. Oh, you. Yeah, you told and me so the story. This he, is great. He, we were doing lines, and he uh, he emailed his dad because his dad loved Muhammad Ali. And yeah. He wrote this really beautiful, heartfelt email. And uh, yeah, it was just so funny. It's mm. just like crushing emails, like doing rails, crushing emails. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what I'm really good at email? When, I'm, fu- when I'm fucking lit, dude. When I hit the slopes, send some emails. Um, so I, I was on this job with, uh, remember that guy, Ed, that we don't yeah. like? Oh, that, which guy, Ed? The guy we worked with, Ed. The, oh, the, f- the like camera guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was back? Yeah, yeah um, fuck that guy. Yeah, he sucked. Yeah. So someone married him. He's married. He's married, Oof. I guess. But so uh, I was bitching about him with uh, the other this other guy we know, uh, and he was like, you know, nobody likes him. Nobody likes this guy, uh-huh. and he does this the most obnoxious shit I've ever seen in my entire life. But he was complaining about something on the call sheet, and he was sending the complaints to you know, the guy we know and the way he was sending the complaints was with memes. He had a meme generator on his phone Horrible. and he's, yeah, he's Horrible. Like, yeah. So it's like, uh, he's showing me, he's yeah, here. I'll just show you the fucking text messages. You say something for two seconds. Uh, <sighs> Talk about Syria. Let's Syria. Um, someone, I saw Gary, uh, Randy Quaid. You know that guy? Yeah. He, he posted a picture that look, okay. You know forget that? about Randy Quaid. Look okay, at the text. Sorry, yeah. Look, um, look how obnoxious that is. Sh- <laughs> Wait, first of all, this is the guy from Futurama doing the like squinty, sarcastic. Yeah, yeah. Thing. it's Fry. It's the Fry, fry. meme. Yeah, the yeah, Fry. Yeah. Not sure if I if an early call time helps me get out sooner tomorrow or screws me over with turnaround. Yeah, and look at look at look at. Look Not at, sure if we're wrapping at three p.m. or three a.m. <laughs> yeah, imagine having to deal with that all day long from that guy. Are you fucking having a coworker me? that will only communicate with you through memes? He's the worst person <laughs> in the world. <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever seen. That's egregious. Yeah. Um. So, uh, should we should uh, we talk about what, what Aleppo is for uh, our Gary uh-huh. Johnson? I feel like everybody, everybody listens to this is voting for Gary Johnson. Oh yeah, for sure. I yeah. feel like we definitely have some li- libertarian. Yeah. What's a libtard? Like, how do you? What's their retard term? What libertarian is libertarian? Libtard is liberal. Libertarian. Libertarian is yeah. is libertarian. It's a good one. Yeah. Libertarian sounds like an uh, a zodiac sign. Libertarian sounds like a like a. Well, my my like star, star sign Trek. is my star sign is libertarian, <laughs> but I was born in rising Cancer, so it's, it sounds like a planet that they. You know, I'm very Trek. aggressive, but I'm also passionate <laughs> I love how, like all the horoscopes are like well i'm a scorpio so i'm actually the smartest person in the world but i can also be emotional <laughs> it means it's like people just fall in love with me but i'm also a genius <laughs> that's what sagittarius is dude i really could not give two shits about that but if you're trying to get laid in new york city you just have to listen to hours of nonsense about the zodiac I don't think I ever have. What's your rising sign? Yeah. Just please suck my dick. Please shut up. Do people actually talk about... I don't think that's... Girls love it, dude. I think that's a weird... That's like a weird thing that Rob Reiner invented for his movies, is that women like 
that seems Rob like, Ryder. I feel like you know he all this all the stereotypes about relationships he came up with and created them through his his films. What Spinal Tap? Uh, no. Wait, did, when Harry Met Sally, direct Spinal Tap or Rob Ryder? Uh, f- I don't know. Fucking no. I think maybe Christopher Guest did. Or wait, you maybe because that was his first. That was the first movie with that whole with that ensemble click. cast. Yeah. yeah, so maybe it was Rob Reiner. But like you know, like the when Harry met Sally scene. Yeah. When they're like, women don't fake orgasms, and she's like, women fake orgasms all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like people don't actually have that conversation. That conversation. Yeah, I don't wait, think people people have that conversation all the time. Also, I love that then she proceeds to do the fakest orgasm anyone has ever heard. Right, were we joking to, around about like how if she was just like fuck my ass, yeah, fuck my ass, fuck my ass, fuck, finger my fucking ass, my fuck. filthy ass, uh, uh, my yeah. pussy, <laughs> my pussy so wet. <laughs> yeah, just in Katz's deli. I was at Katz's and my friend, I was eating there, uh, and my friend said, "Look up," and there's a sign right above me, and they were like, "This is where." Meg Ryan faked an orgasm. There's like a sign hanging mm-hmm. above one of the chairs. I sat in the in the fake orgasm chair, so pretty cool. I guess. So it's like you fucked Meg Ryan. Yeah, basically. Are you, have you seen how bad she looks now? She looks bad. She's gotten so much plastic surgery. Ugh. She's. She, you know how. You know how like when women, those women that are just like. Uh, they get so much plastic surgery that you see them and they're like, I'm finished. <laughs> and they, they've just gotten all of it. Ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Pretty much, dude. Because they all look the same. They all yeah, look yeah. like that fucking, that bear cat. They have that like, that big puffy cat face. It's but it, there's also puffy, a... It's sort of puffy, yeah, because the collagen Like a the Care lips. Bear element to yeah, it. Yeah, it's sort of froggy too. They kind of look like Pepe a little bit. Like yeah. a... Like brown, like burnt pepes. Yeah, they like should get whiskers. Pepes. They should get whiskers to go with the face. Oh, uh, like uh, like Mister Mistoffel, like uh, yeah, right. <laughs> play cats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh man, do you uh have have you do you like musicals? Um, you know, I say I don't because you're not supposed to. But you're a man's man, right? Yeah. But anytime I've actually been at a musical, I, like I really enjoy it. Me too. My my grandma's birthday, like two years ago, what my did you like see? my my grandma or my grandfather, my mom took my grandma and me to go see uh, the Fantastics. Is that even that sounds like a fade up, made up like fucking fake musical? That was like name. a Pixar movie, wasn't it? Uh, no, that. See, the Fantastic. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't a Pixar movie. It was a musical. I know I'm not confusing the two. It was a live. It was like a live performance thing. I don't even remember what the fucking story was, but I enjoyed it. It was great. I think it's pretty cool. Sometimes. Yeah. I saw the. Uh, I saw like I wish if I had enough money, I would definitely go see plays. Oh, me too. Uh, I went to see the. Uh, um, what the fuck? The James Franco uh, of Mice and Men. Of mice and men. Yeah, Chris Chris O'Dowd and James Franco on bro- on off Broadway or whatever. Yeah, either on or off Broadway. Whatever. That it was know. near Broadway. A J- Broadway. Adjacent. Broadway adjacent. Yeah. What if like how far off Broadway do you have to be before it's off off Broadway? Off off Broadway. Yeah. Uh, Sakakas. Okay. Yeah. So the Morton Downey Jr. Flushing. show. The Morton Downey Jr. show was could technically off be. Off Broadway production. Yeah. Okay. So it's like art house. God, I wish he was alive. Yeah, he's so great. Yeah. When I was doing He's that, Trump the, before Trump, right? Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah. When I was he doing the president. When I was doing that Nicole shit, part of the canon was that Nicole's retarded son was actually fathered by Morton Downey Jr. <laughs> she snuck because, and then I did the math on it, and she would have had to have fucked him like right before he died. So right. she f- snuck into a hospital. And, you saw the documentary, right? Yeah. So they had like. The guy that directed that documentary, the guy that fucking put the whole thing yeah, together, yeah. he like follows and unfollows people on Twitter until you follow him. Really? He's followed and unfollowed He's me annoying. like three times. Yeah. Did you? You didn't follow him back? Well, initially I did. Then I saw how many people like he followed, and I was like, "Oh, this is, he's just." He's I don't a know. What, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. So they had like so remember the, how they go into like what who his fan bases were. So it was like p- parents from the Midwest visiting New York. Yeah. That, like agreed with his like populist policies. Uh huh. Right. Jersey trash. Right. And then the third were like Jewish high school boys. Yeah. That are like got the irony yeah, you know? yeah, yeah and they're like we're like this is actually very funny yeah 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 and uh there was like a crew of them in the documentary and one of them was the cook at my camp and i had like no idea but he was like he was one of the morton downey jr heads 
he was like there with all his friends and i guess they're all still best friends that's crazy i mean it sounds like the best high school experience like speaking of cooks yeah uh somebody who like listens to the podcast hit me up and they right. were like um they were like i know you guys uh, like chapa already does movie reviews but you guys really should do movie reviews oh yeah for sure and i, I don't know and, but he goes um somebody should really you guys should really do like uh somebody needs to cover like all those old action movies mm-hmm. like under siege and shit yeah. And uh, I was literally watching Under Siege. It's while, one of my favorite movies. While he messaged me to tell me that. Yeah. It's incredible. That's with the cook element is because he's a cook in that movie. He plays a... You were talking about that thing about like perfect moments, right? Yeah. About like, oh, you only get like three or four of these right. like... When I predicted Buckaroo Banzai. You predicted that? I predict... Okay, so I... Uh, I got my friend's brother sent me weed in the mail from Oregon and I asked him what the name of the weed was and his brother didn't text him back for like a couple hours. I said, you know, I'm just going to call it Death Star and uh, his brother texted him back like two hours later. He's like, yeah, it's called Death Star. That's it's crazy. Like, really, the bullshit about that is that people win the lottery, right? Yeah. You only get a couple of those in your life. Mm-hmm. And I just wasted it. You know, yeah. I feel so like I just fucking. Well, wasted then there's it. also people that somehow get like AIDS from a paper cut. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Some guy that works in an envelope factory. <laughs> um, he gets paper cut AIDS. Um, yeah, Under Siege is great. I would, I've actually best. been I've been going through. You know, I last week I started watching. I tried to. I'm trying to like watch everything that's ever won Best Picture. Yeah, why? I don't know because I like need new shit to watch. That's yeah, how but I find like new shit to watch. There's things to get into that weren't. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry to put on my will, uh, my w- Brooklyn, uh, you know, cool guy hat. But I'm the, sure there are, but I have plenty of time. Those movies are trash. A lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah. But I have the time to do it. Of course. And then after. What year are you at right now? Um, well, I it's like spotty, so I just pick things. Okay. Because I've seen like the entirety of like the 1970s, most of the 1980s, uh-huh. and then 90s and 2000s. Did Out of for sure. Africa win Best yeah, Picture? Yeah, it did. Have you seen that? I haven't. It's bad, right? It's I don't like know. Not, it's not that good. Right? Well, it's got Africa in the title, so my hopes aren't high for that one. <laughs> um, but more like Stay Out of Africa. <laughs> That's a movie I would watch. I didn't know uh, uh, Namibia used to just be part of South Africa yeah. until like 1990. Yeah. That it was just West South Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Zimbabwe used to be Rhodesia and have all yeah. different names. Yeah. Like Harare was uh, Salisbury. Uh, well, Zimbabwe, was it? Yeah, Zimbabwe. What's the one that became, that took the white people and then became a new place after Rhodesia became Zimbabwe? Like the, all the white people, what are you talking about? Because Mugabe kicked out all the white people yeah. basically yeah. from Zimbabwe and uh-huh. then they went over to the South one. South Africa? I don't no, know. No, no. The one, there's one next door that also starts with a Z. Uh, Zambia? Maybe. Yeah. Zambia. Namibia, Zambia, N- Namibia, Zambia, Tia Tamara, you know, Venus. I don't Serena. know if I've said this on the podcast, but I lived in Africa when I was a kid. Yeah, that's. You live there, or your just parents are from Africa? I lived. We moved back for a year and a half. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, when I was a little kid, I I got the accent, and then like I came back, and everyone's like, "You sound like such a South African." Yeah, you know what's funny is because really I always knew the name Rhodesia just from like having like geography jammed and in my also head. The dog. Uh, is there a Rhodesian Ridgeback? Is oh, that a I, dog? I don't fucking know. I don't know. But uh, and then I like I didn't know until the Dylan Roof thing that that's like a thing uh, white supremacists oh, associate they wanted with. To go back to Rhodesia. Yeah, yeah. I think they were somehow even more racist than South Africa. Was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they wouldn't let black people own any land or something, and I think it was an even smaller white minority. Something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was, I mean, I watched the, I, the only, I watched a South African movie. Like, which one? Uh, Dust Invictus? Devil. No, Dust Devil. What's that? It's, uh, well, I watched, uh, have you seen Lost Souls, the Richard Stanley documentary? No. It's a documentary about Richard Stanley's, uh, like, um, remake of The Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh, yeah, yeah, In, yeah. like, 1996. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it, it's... Um, if you haven't seen it, it's fucking great because it's yeah. all about all the crazy shit Brando was doing towards the end of his career. Right. Like they fat Brando. Yeah. So Brando was like notoriously difficult to work with at this point. And Richard Stanley had directed 
two or three movies at this point. Wait, just as an aside, was it you who told me that in the siege he did wear pants the entire time? Uh, so the, score, shoot, the, the score, score the yeah. score. Yeah, somebody told I I read <laughs> so that they online. Yeah, they, they had to shoot, shoot him from the waist, waist up because he refused to wear pants. <laughs> he's just wearing movies. Yeah, but then if you watch the movie and like the first scene he's in, he immediately you can see him wearing pants. So oh, that okay, one's so that one's true. not true, but there are a bunch I, of other. I want to believe that's true. There are a, a bunch of other Brando things, like he uh, on on the island of Doctor Morell, he like invented this weird hat that had a bucket on top of it, so he could pour ice in it and bucket cool hat. off his head. Yeah, um, and then they had to like just let him wear that while they were shooting the movie because he didn't want to take that bucket full to, filled with ice off his head. Um, it's the documentary's great. It covers like all this shit. I mean, yeah, I guess like we have famous. we have fucking time to kill. You know, I can tell you all the all. I can just give you the play by play. Let's go. Yeah. So it's great. It not just for the Brando shit, but uh, like Richard Stanley directed like two or three movies at that point. His like breakthrough um, into the mainstream was this movie Hardware, because uh, prior to that he had been like a music video guy, and he made Hardware. What year was this Island of Doctor Moreau? 1996 i think oh okay yeah so hardware was 1990 and uh he made dust devil in between the two but um yeah so i think new line was gonna make um the island of dr moreau and they were like wary about hiring richard and then they like got a couple of people on board with the, they got brando on board with the project and val kilmer and then they decided to replace richard One stanley of- my favorite actors yeah. of all time. But I mean both of them yeah. actually. They decided to replace Richard Stanley and Richard Stanley like had a temper tantrum about it and like went to go see Brando and for some reason Brando like took the meeting, you know, in his like bizarre castle uh, on like Mulholland Drive or wherever the fuck he lives. His neighbors, he was neighbors with like Jack Nicholson. They live on like the top of the hill mm-hmm. and they're like and uh, Harry Dean Stanton uh probably he's been in so many fucking movies yeah, you know he's, he's in he's still in movies he has like four movies coming out this year yeah and he's like 90 he's a legend he's 92 or 93 Have you seen years Paris, old Texas? yeah love it yeah it's a great movie um uh, well i don't know why the fuck but you wanted to we're supposed to be the entire plot of the island no of Dr. we're supposed Mara. to be doing jokes dude what the fuck we're is not this? being funny we're, we're not the, being funny this well, is that, turning into stop here no, we don't need fucking the, stop here. This is turning into regular podcast territory. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about funny stuff, dude. Oh let's, man, we, we gotta be. Mean. I watched five minutes of the View the other day, and they're talking about oh, those cunts. They're talking about <laughs> they're talking about like uh, is Whoopi's like a new study says that sex on average only lasts seven minutes, and then all of them are like, oh Ooh. hell no, you know. <laughs> And then, five, like, you know, two of them are hot. I don't know what they always have, like, one woman a on the show. A hot conservative. Yeah. They got yeah. a hot conservative Latina now. Woo! Yeah. Uh, Honey child. Yeah. And so Oprah's sitting there, and she just looks Oprah. like. Yeah, hey, sorry. Whoopi. Whoopi's sitting there. I call her Oprah as a joke so much that now, now I do it on <laughs> or by accident. I. Um, is Goldberg a stage name, by the way? No. I've always been too afraid to ask. No, that's... Uh, She's Jewish? No, I'm pretty sure that's a stage name. It has to be. Yeah. Um, God, if you could choose any last so name. So she's sitting there, and they put her on the end of the table. So she looks. She always looks like a pile of like the blankets that they give to people that survive a disaster. Oh, yeah. Like she's For just sure. this lumpy mess covered in blankets of clothing with... <laughs> Usually, like, uh, nice sneakers coming out of the bottom. Yeah. And, uh, wearing Yeezys. Yeah. And, uh, she's like, 45 minutes at least. And it's like, that's how long she fucks? Yeah. No way, dude. No Who's fucking she? way. Who's she, fucking you that long? Ted Danson. Yeah, right. He was for a while. Can you imagine that? I just imagine her sitting there with, like, you know how, like, uh, Jabba had Wait, Princess she has a Leia tit chained tattoo, up? Right? That's what everyone was going nuts about at the Oscars or oh, something? Oh, yeah. Everyone, but now I can't remember if it was her or Oprah because somebody got in trouble for calling her Oprah. And then I was like, that's so funny. Who did? I don't know. Some, how do you confuse them? Uh, because you so often confuse them as a joke as that a you joke. eventually do it on purpose. I guess so. Yeah. Um, like Joy Behar, I call her Reba McIntyre as a joke. as a joke, but then I start doing it on purpose. The Fred Armisen impression of Joy Behar that he used to do on SNL is so fucking. I don't funny. think I've ever seen it. It's very funny. Yeah, it's a, it's intensely funny. Uh, should we take another? Br- yeah, I guess you, here you do you do you handle your business over there. 
I'll just keep talking about something. Keep talking, and then I'll hand off. You'll hand you it. You handle your business. Okay, you keep talking for I a really second. I really want a cigarette and to take a shit right I got to take a shit so bad. You keep talking <laughs> for a second. I'm going to refill my water. Okay, I'm going to yeah. talk, refill the water. Then you'll come back. You'll talk. I'll do it too. Tell them about the rest of that movie. I, well, Nick's asking me to summarize the rest of that movie he was describing, but I haven't seen it. I have seen a similar movie called Lost in La Mancha, which was about uh, Terry Gilliam trying to make... <clears throat> have you ever seen Viva Rock Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking classic. Uh, that was the sequel, the Flintstones sequel? Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? I never saw that one. I saw the, the one with John Goodman. He's in... Wasn't he in both of them? Was he? I assume Dude, they were. This is so everybody. funny. This is what cocaine is. Cocaine yeah. is literally just book and movie recommendations and albums. Oh, dude, you've never listened to the Rolling Stones? Yeah. Okay, you gotta get into the Rolling Stones. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, they're so good. Yeah, this is why we shouldn't do movie reviews because their movie review for me is like, yeah, I sat there, I watched it. Here's what I remember what happened, and I thought it was pretty good. That's my take on almost every movie I've ever seen. Yeah, me too. I'm not cri- critical enough. I'm not like liberal or artsy enough. Yeah, to like- go ahead. You do a bomb. Okay. While I quickly review uh, The Phantom staring Billy Zane as... Uh, that was Alec Baldwin. No, Ugh. that's The Shadow. That's The Shadow. Yeah. Uh, the Phantom is... Uh, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Phantom is like a children's movie where, you know, a similar thing. It's like set in the 30s or some shit. But I remember they had like one violent scene where a guy gets stabbed in the eye by a fucking like microscope that has razor blades that come out of it. It's a kid's movie? Yeah. It's like uh, a bizarrely violent scene. Oh, wow. Um, So they should give me a job on the censorship board. Guys, uh, please, you know, continue donating. More bonus content like this coming coming We're right do up a different drug at, uh every uh bonus episode next week jankum stav's doing jankum because he uh <laughs> keep going oh uh, okay so uh so stav what basically what you do is you t- you poop into a jar uh into a mason jar you leave it out in the this stove. is real guys this is jankum it's what they do in africa it's what kids are <laughs> You leave it out in the sun. And uh, do you remember that ad that was like post 9-11? And it was like, um, if you do drugs, your money's going to Al-Qaeda. Yeah. Do you remember that one? uh, Yeah, I do. But how funny is it that they fucking offered to put this show on the Anthony Acumia network without like, they didn't listen to a single episode because we make fun of it, that show. Is that why? I don't know, but like the fact that he would be like, hey, I think it would be a good fit. It just means that like someone was like, hey, this show, like people like this show. And they're like, yeah, sure, we'll buy it without putting any fucking thought into it. That's how great show business is. What's the deal that Anthony Cumia would offer us? Um, $100,000 an episode? $100,000 an episode. I don't know. They make good money. It yeah. would be, and like, you know, Lewis gave us an offer too. For what's he on? He has his own. He has, he made enough money on like the Anthony Cumia shit that he has his own studio now. I thought Lewis does a thing with uh, with Big J Okers. Yeah, there. I think their Legion of Skanks is now on Lewis's own podcast network that he owns, and he has studio space and shit. Wow, dude. Yeah, they're doing so real why, well. If he's so successful, why does he have to fucking steal the Puerto Rican rattlesnake moniker? I don't know. Dude, I saw him. He was on Periscope the other day, and uh, <laughs> he didn't know I was watching or whatever, and he was like. He was like, yeah, uh, what am I going to do to deal with uh, Nick Mullen? He was like, I'm t- I, I want to, you know, he's calling himself the Puerto Rican rattlesnake to troll me, but like, you can't fucking troll me. Like, I just don't get trolled. I'm just going to fucking punch you in the head. He's like, that- would that be funny <laughs> if I just fucking walked up to him and punched him in the head? Seriously, guys? Like, would that be funny? You know, <laughs> or whatever. And I joined and I was like, Lewis, this is the police. <laughs> and then his connection went out. <laughs> um, okay, so this maybe uh, might have been a false start with the bonus content, but whatever, dude. It's fucking bonus content, and I've decided just now in the snap judgment, I will release Dickfield Diaries. Um, I'll go ahead and, and do that anyways. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, um, finally, uh, where are we at right now? It's like 30 minutes total total yeah no way yeah 30 total dude this hasn't been 30 minutes we've been here for two and a half hours nah 
What were you going to say? You got to hurry up. You got to say it. Colin Kaepernick, dude. Oh, Not yeah. standing, supporting the troops. Oh, can you believe that shit? Can you believe that? Can you fucking believe the disrespect? That Here's that thing. Did that guy who may or may not be black or Puerto Rican or something. He's what is black. that? What is that last name even? He was adopted by white people. But that's not even a white so last name. So that's what people are... Kaepernick? It's like German sounding. Yeah. Or He's Dutch. a fucking Nazi. <laughs> He's not I'm going to have to listen to some crowd bastard <laughs> tell me who the real Nazis are. I guess Is this so. me right here? No, no, no. That's uh, bonus. B- 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 bonus. That's bonus. That's leftover. Okay. Well, you know what? I think we've uh, we've done enough damage. For have the- we? I don't know. I wonder if this was listenable. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Do you want to take another break and come back? <laughs> yeah. Let's let's just see. Okay. All right. All right. We'll yeah, yeah. We, we'll, might, we'll t- we might be back. We might be back. All right. Um, uh, bonus content part three. We're going hour two here. Yeah, we're gonna just try and you know what? If you can't, if qual, if uh, quantity instead of qual- quality, right? Yeah, um, this is gonna be a marathon. This is a fucking nightmare, dude. <laughs> this, is, this is such a I bad really, idea. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea, you know, at first because I, you know, they're like, oh, you know, Martin Scorsese made entire movies like this, you know. Where he was just constantly doing coke. Yeah, I feel like we should just figure out a way to apologize quickly and uh, to the listener. If, if we haven't see this problem is we don't have any. We haven't been hanging out, so we don't have any good bits. We went to that party and there were gay guys doing poppers. That's pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's just the extent of that. Right? Yeah, we didn't see them fuck each other afterwards or anything. No, that would have been that would have been cool. I was thinking about like, oh, no, I wasn't. <laughs> Like if you could get, cause you know, like AIDS is such a big part of like the gay community where there's like bug chasers and shit. If you could get pure AIDS and like sell it as like, uncut. Art, like a, yeah, like an artisanal, like pure uncut. I'm glad that these guys are taking $5 to, <laughs> to hear that. God one. damn it, dude. I should have just done, I should have just done the dick field shit on my own. I don't know why we need stuff. We, we can't do this without stuff. I mean, listen, he's on the road with Bobby Kelly, who he won't let anyone else feature for. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Um, he won't hear this. He doesn't pay the $5 a month. Stav will never hear this. I'm episode. not paying the $5. I'm not paying it either. <laughs> You're, none of us are going to ever hear this. Yeah. I don't even listen to these when I edit them. I got a text today from uh, a girl that listens to the podcast that her and her friend had an hour long debate uh murder uh fuck kill uh or murder what is it murder marry fuck marry kill fuck marry kill the cum boys and it's i'm always kill i'm sure i'm kill i'm kill i told her i would kill and then uh marry stop and then kill you (laughs) yeah i'm the i'm the guy that gets fucking killed i feel that way that's my self-esteem issue well it's cool that i like that one of the options is shitty like it's uh, like fuck Mary kill is just like okay here's three things which one do you not like well Mary implies you just fuck them for the rest of your life right sure yeah so that's the better so why of the two. is fuck like it's rank, o- why isn't the game just called like rank these three things who do you want to marry yeah which one of these is the best and then the middle one and then the shitty one that you wish was dead right right that's like a Seinfeld that could be a whole Seinfeld episode the secret is that all the cum boys wish we were dead so yeah and we're trying to get there by by doing as many drugs as possible and recording. Man, I really wish we had some <laughs> fucking funny thing to end on here. I really was hoping we'd we'd hit that record button and then, you know, we'd be firing on all cylinders. Well, let's go story style, right? We're on the we're on the like talky drug, right? So like t- what was like the what was what was the first time you did uh cocaine? It was on Halloween when I was 15. What was the most uh, pleasurable time? What was the best time you ever did? Oh, I don't fucking know, dude. I remember. I okay, go. Tell your story then. You don't have to prompt I me just, for your story. I just... Uh, just, uh, you know, like one of the first times we ever did it, but we were all nerds, so we just watched The Room with director's commentary the entire time. It was incredible. That was a great story. That was I'm a so, good story. I'm, I'm so glad we went. Are you into time. the room? The room changed my life. 
No, I've actually never seen it. Really? Yeah, never. Oh, it, it completely changed my life. It changed the way I evaluate all art. It changed like what I find funny, what it 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 ruined my brain. Why? I, I remember just seeing it in college. I'm having like a panic attack about how completely unfunny the last hour has been. Oh, it's been so unfunny. Who the fuck is listening to this? They're going to demand a refund. <laughs> Maybe we hang on to this one and then we just like drop it like this is the lost cocaine episode. Like we, we, we'll reference it on the podcast. No, because there has to be bonus content. I promised it. I was going to do the dick field thing. He fucking he. You know what? He knew it. He knew that <laughs> that was going to be. He saw that I announced bonus content and, he and then he had you. that meltdown. Oh, that's what this is. That's exactly what this is. <laughs> the Seth, Seth fucking got me. He fucking got me, dude. I hope he knew. He, I knew. Hope this he is was true, like, but it's they're going to try and make money at some point. And the only way they're going to be able to do it <laughs> is, is with if they me. is with me. So I'll wait until they announce it, and then I'll get them for fraud because they have to. They, I'm on drugs now because of Seth Cockfield. It's his fault. I've been sober for four years, and now I'm falling off the wagon because Seth checkmated me. We, we did coke last weekend. All right. <laughs> Seth will have his revenge one day on you, but I don't think it'll be like this. I think it's going to be far more elaborate. I think it's going to involve, uh, you know, you you on the cover of the New York Post with some really bad pun above your head. You know, people shit shot. on those posts, but that's a lot of work. The come, pun department? Yeah. To come up with those? Yeah. Every single day? Yeah. New pun every day. Can you imagine how furiously... Uh, whoever comes up with those beats off at the end of every day. That must be such a miserable existence. <laughs> Having to come up with fucking puns. <laughs> the pun man. <laughs> the amount of stress you're under for such a dumb fucking thing. Oh, God. I think about, like, that, how... The amount of stress that some really worthless jobs have. Like being a clown. Like being a circus clown. How much pressure that must be to perform constantly. And everyone hates you anyways. Oh, yeah. Kids want to beat you up. Yeah. Being a mascot for a stadium, like the joke when we were kids were that we wanted to fuck them up. We yeah. like try to trip them. They have really bad peripheral vision because the masks, mm -hmm. you know, they're always like. Uh, Goofy got in trouble for touching some girl's pussy at Disney World. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. And that's like the World Series of being a mascot is being one of the Disney World. Characters. Oh, yeah. You're really up there in the mascot. Yeah. Game. Can you imagine rising to the level of Disney World Goofy? <laughs> And then that's Only when you strike. Be brought down. You spent years as Chuck E. Cheese, probably, <laughs> or as like you know a guy. No, in a Chuck E. Cheese is like animatronic, isn't he? Um, no. Well, they have the band in the showroom. The yeah. band, yeah. That shit is rad. All right. So, in the interest of the cocaine episode, we should just finish this, right? Finish the rest of the cocaine and the episode too. And the episode. God damn it, dude! I fucking. I, I'm so sorry. I have like, there's just nothing. I feel exactly. really bad too. I mean, I did say before we even took the cocaine that, you know, John Lennon, Stevie Wonder, Paul McCartney and Harry Nilsson four of the best musicians of all time mm -hmm. tried to do this and their album was absolute dog shit. Yeah, but we're not musicians. Yeah. Yeah. But we're like, you know, we're like four, we're like two of the worst podcasters <laughs> of all time. <laughs> yeah. Why would this make us any better? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I think we should have really done the the idea where we do director's commentary on an old episode. I feel like this episode was going great until we took the break to do the cocaine, <laughs> and then it quickly it was, became it was fine. Yeah. We had our shit together. <laughs> it wasn't the funniest. We were making fun of stuff for being was fat. Okay. We were making fun of him for being fat. Uh, but there was well, he couldn't defend himself. The, could, the yeah, best way. That's the best way to make fun of anybody. Yeah. Until they figure out a way to fuck you by <laughs> the demanding a public apology. Oh shit. Can you guys hear that? It's the police outside. They heard that there are two white men in an apartment in bed so, Um. So what do you think? Uh, Winita Broderick, lying, telling the truth. Wait, was that the the rape in the 80s? Yeah, the Bill Clinton rape. Oh, oh, I thought that was like the woman that was on the... Um, Gordon I thought Downey it was, Jr. show and Al Sharpton was there and there was that they did it at the Apollo. Yeah, every time, you know, honestly, for a second, anytime I hear Juanita Broderick, I think it's like uh, some like Mexican woman that Matthew Broderick illegitimately <laughs> knocked up. That's my like my the snap thought in my head. 
<laughs> and it's, then I have to remember. That. So wait, when was this from? I don't fucking know. Arkansas, he raped a woman? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he raped someone. You don't, you know, you always believe, oh my God, dude, we have to, we have to stop doing this. <laughs> we have to fucking, we have to stop doing this episode as soon as possible. This is the worst episode oh comes God, out of all dude. time. What do you guys say? Do you call low. it checkers or rallies? Uh, <laughs> right into the show. Let us know. We got on Carl's Jr. Hardee's. What do you guys Carl's think? Carl's Jr. Hardee's. Chipwich or cookie sandwich? You know, it's kind of annoying. Or ice cream me? sandwich. Uh, how like I'm from the West Coast, but like how people talk about In and Out like it's the best. That place fucking sucks. People do it's that with all every right. place. It's people okay. do that with everybody has like Shake Shack here. Shake Shack Shake sucks. Shake Shack's not that good. It's not that good. There's no such thing as a good burger. What do you mean there's no such thing as a good burger? It doesn't exist. Red You've never had a good, good burger before? Somebody just got shot, dude. Did you hear that? <laughs> there's literally No, it's a firework. No, dude. there's gunshot. It's not a firework, it's September. What are they celebrating? The end 9/11? of summer. 9-11? <laughs> 9-11 is the closest it's holiday. tomorrow at midnight. We should podcast until midnight when it becomes 9-11. It's September 10th right now. Oh, holy shit, dude. I forgot. This is like the 9-11 bonus episode. Yeah, it's the That's pre- why it's a disaster. That's, that's why it's going yeah, so bad is yeah, it's a fucking yeah, homage to 9-11. Yeah, yeah. So for the 3,000 people that died, that's why this has been literally the worst one we've ever done i know i say that every time but not only is it bad we don't know when to quit this is like you know when somebody's bombing and this is a hostage light. situation yeah yeah, yeah. what's is, the best new york city meltdown you've seen at an open mic uh oh you were there with that one guy yep. at the pit that one time at where he's like pit. you go around everybody wants your fucking dollar and it's like those are homeless people you should feel bad for them they're not trying to swindle you they live outside i live in a bunk bed in bushwick yeah. with eight other guys yeah so does everyone yeah these are all comedians you paid three dollars to be on stage right now just move home yeah just move home you have to have that as an option i try yeah i tried to be a fucking comedian (laughs) he just watches the speech from glenn gary glenn ross every night and looks over his fucking tinder jokes the pacino speech yeah always be closing not the pacino speech the fucking alec baldwin speech. yeah that's what i meant guys glenn gary glenn ross is another movie that i've seen (laughs) The movies you're listening to the movies I've seen podcast with Randy uh, Ipcut. Ha, my name's Randy, and in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the film uh, Ernest Goes to Jail. Uh, in the movie, there is a man named Ernest who uh, goes to jail, and lots of things happen in regards to. Him being in jail. Well, I wonder how <laughs> how many people you could get to listen <laughs> to listen to an hour of that. The films I've seen. The films I've seen. Ah, my name's Randy. <laughs> Another film I've seen is the sequel to Jurassic Park, which the name escapes me at this moment. But folks, the dinosaurs are back and they're angrier than ever. They're biting. They're slashing. Some of them are flying. Is that an egg I see? Oh no, the egg's opening now. The, now there's baby dinosaurs running but, around. Yeah, yeah. They're going to grow up and be back out yeah. dinosaurs pretty Hi, soon. Hi, my name's Randy, and you're listening to the Movies I've Seen <laughs> podcast. On today's episode, 101 Dalmatians. Let's count them up. One, One Dalmatian, <laughs> two, two Dalmatians, Dalmatians <laughs> three Dalmatians, four Dalmatians. Oops, here comes five. Five Dalmatians. <laughs> oh, no, there's the sixth one. Now we got six Dalmatians, folks. Stay tuned. Uh, Seven Dalmatians. How did stand-up comedy exist like how is it fueled for 15 to 20 years on this substance cocaine oh, i don't know and leather jackets have you ever watched old john stewart stand up oh my god he's so, so fucking funny oh here's this is the only so uh, because i was going to do I that i love that mark Marin and john stewart yeah. hate each other i was going to do that vogue birthday party the anna Wintour oh, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and the only joke that i wanted to do i was hoping there'd be like a fat fashion lady there so i could call her nutella deville <laughs> <laughs> i've been looking for a home for that joke for probably weeks now <laughs> i don't know who to call in the tele deville because you know what you it is one. anytime there's a like a fat fabulous woman everybody's like oh that bitch ursula look it's ursula ursula that's they always go, the ursula, first one yeah yeah which the tele deville is great so it's guys better. if you have an opportunity let's get rid of ursula let's swap in fucking uh nutella deville i feel like that randy character that could that could sort of make up the for films the last I've seen. yeah <laughs> <laughs> huh. 
My name's Sarandi, and this week I watched Five Easy Pieces, starring Jack Nicholson as Jonathan Five. Is that your favorite movie? Yeah, it is. It's pretty good. Well, you know what? It was my favorite movie when I was 19, and then... Uh, right I wouldn't around, say it's my favorite. Right around 20, 21, I stopped caring about anything. Like, I like, like uh, being passionate about things. Things being good. Yeah, yeah. So That's what happened to me after I saw The Room. I yeah, like, there's no, there's no such thing as good. And there's what, no such what was thing your as favorite bad. movie when you were a kid? My list of favorite things was so bad. It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like high school is Gladiator. Yeah. Because I saw it with my dad. We talked about this on the last one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did. Um, it was a bad movie. I saw it recently. Pretty bad. Ghost Dog Way of the Samurai. That I thought that movie. movie was a kick ass. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was really cool. Ugh. I told you I saw Jim Jarmusch walking around the village. Jim Jarmusch. I don't think anyone knows how to pronounce his name. Jim Jarmusch. Germ Jarmusch. Jarmusch. Jim Jarmusch. J- Jim Jar. That's a good podcast. Ha. My name's Randy, and you're listening to the How to Pronounce Jim Jar. <laughs> Jim Jim Jar Jim Jarmusch's name podcast, sponsored by the Anthony Cumia Network. Uh, we we have been blessed with Anthony. Mister Cumia has allowed us to come in his studio and discuss Jim Jarmusch's name. Norman Wilkerson is going to message me and call me uh, so many names for how bad this is. This podcast right yeah. now? Yeah, even the good ones, Norman, it's like, oh, it's a fucking awful show. It's <laughs> fucking he says terrible. That? Yeah, he's like, you guys are fucking idiots. This is really? a bad show. Yeah. But he's your friend. I know. That's why he thinks it's okay to say that to me. But he's doing that to like shit on you because he's your friend. Yeah, right? but he's still shitting on me, legitimately. Me. <laughs> yeah. All right, so just to catch everyone up that's not in the room, we're going to finish this right now, gonna and then we're going to finish the podcast. Who the fuck is setting off 9-11 fireworks? <laughs> it's for 9-11, I, dude. Come on, man. Those are actually coming from Staten Island. Are they? They're firing them across the Verrazano. Yeah. But they do that every day. They we celebrate 9-11 when the clock hits it. We should go to Staten Island for the 9-11 parade tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's the number one holiday Staten Island they love that shit dude um alright so I guess I alright that's off putting I don't like the, I don't like those fireworks going off yeah I don't what like if there were, what if there were veterans in this neighborhood you know you can't even make popcorn around veterans you can't do fireworks what's your favorite war my favorite war yeah uh, hold on one second what's yours you tell me my favorite war. Um, I don't know. I don't have one. Hampton used to. Oh, never mind. I, uh, I think the. Uh, I was. I think the uh, a cool war was eighteen twelve, because we were the bad guys, sort of, and uh, it ended, and Andrew Jackson didn't like know that it ended. And he destroyed New Orleans. Like the war was over, and he was like, "Well, there's there's still a war going on." So then he just like marched down to New Orleans, and then he he raised the entire city. I think that's pretty badass. Was that was the Six Flags there when this happened? Uh, this was bef- this was. Uh, Have we ever talked about that? Flags? Our day trip to the Six Flags? No, I don't think we've talked about it on the podcast. That's pretty. It doesn't cool. matter. This isn't good podcast content. You know, nobody wants to hear about a time we went to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, dude. it's funny. The we swastikas, went to fucking Six dude. Flags is badass, dude. It was like fucking no, we shut did down, it. and we hung out in there. And like, okay, so yo, Nick we and I were, were in New his, Orleans. His girlfriend was there, and fucking we said shit to her. And then there was that other bitch. Nick and I were in New Orleans. There's a Six Flags that's been left derelict since Katrina. And like, if you hop a fence, you can like go inside. It looks like a post-apocalyptic. You know, it looks pretty badass. But uh, we were laughing the whole time because there's just graffiti everywhere, and one of the most prevalent parts of graffiti it's just uh guys like in the middle of doing a swastika being like oh fuck i did it wrong again yeah they guys they up. can't figure out the swastika until you get to the end of the park and then there was a couple done right so there's like a guy that you could it was documented <laughs> it told the whole story learning how to do a swastika on the day you went to six flags and that's a memory he has now is the day you went to six flags and learned how to draw a swastika it's pretty cool he'll have that the rest of his life yeah fun so- is shape swastika to draw yeah the and that s, s thing i saw i saw the s, s with s, the three lines i saw that s is uh like sidewalk graffiti somebody put that into cement hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh that's good that's good shit that's so, good um i'm gonna call this episode scarface <laughs>
<laughs> can we talk about Scarface for a minute? We can talk about Scarface for Scarface. Uh, I guess we watched it together in April. Yeah. This thing's we're actually going to run out of time on the SD card. We haven't done a podcast this long before, so this is going to run out of time. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Scarface. Um, it's bad. It's very bad. It was fun. We were laughing at Michelle Pfeiffer, remember? Because she was like, "Oh yeah, she's just the biggest cunt in the world." That's yeah, her yeah. character. Oh yeah, the best. I'm from Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> she's at that like fancy gala or whatever, <laughs> looking all fucking. You know, she's like some snooty bitch or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "Where'd you from?" And she goes, "Baltimore." <laughs> like it's not a shithole. All right, get the fuck, please. Oh, this this cat. cat. This cat is a fucking nightmare, dude. All right. The cat is the villain of the You know what? And this isn't going to end with the cat throwing up because the cat already threw up before the podcast started. (laughs) I'm sitting right now next to a pile of vomit on the floor that I stepped in, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Luckily, I don't have to clean it off because there's already vomit everywhere. So, you know what? We should should just call it, dude. I think it's over. It's over. Um, No one's listening at this point. No one's listening at this point. You guys are great. Bonus content. Uh, Dickfield Diaries coming soon. We got prank <laughs> phone calls coming up. Uh, more of that Randy thing, maybe. There'll be like a Randy fucking podcast <laughs> spinoff. Um, I feel like I kind of had my arm twisted into into doing, um, you know, the bonus content stuff. I it's think been that real busy for me lately. I already feel enough pressure doing the fucking regular weekly podcast. I didn't even want a fucking podcast in the first place, but you can't just be a comedian anymore, folks. People you like our be... podcast, and you don't have to feel bad about... Yeah, you do. You know, you should be excited about it. I think that, that there are a bunch of incel gamers out there that love our podcast. And... Yeah, but we don't talk about gaming enough. We got to get back to the source. We got to talk about gaming. We got to talk about Xbox. We got to talk about <laughs> PlayStation 5. The new PlayStation 5, PlayStation Neo is coming out. <laughs> is it? Yeah, PlayStation Neo. It's what is that? Play- PS4 Neo, dude. It's like PlayStation 4, except it's, it's more the money and it's a different shape. Oh. So if you have the old PlayStation 4, guess what? You're fucking gay, trash. dude. You're a fucking trash. You have the worst PlayStation. You're a pussy bitch. You need the newest PlayStation 4, <laughs> Neo. It stands for new, uh, expensive, and online. It's got <laughs> online capabilities. It's Unlike the, the old one. PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation 2, which... Or th- which... 4? Something like that. PS4 right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. So... Okay. Get out there. Keep gaming. It's like 9 at night and we're i gotta wake up at 5 45 <laughs> in the morning tomorrow again i gotta catch a uh well i drive a van to work i got a van sitting outside but yeah uh thank you and please don't like rescind your five dollars yeah, after listening to this please don't we have like big guests planned and big booked. guests the money actually goes to retarded kids so well, no, we had a guest book this week that canceled on us. We were going to do an interview episode, so you can expect Oh, yeah, good actually, stuff. that is true. We were going to do Tim Dillon, but Tim Dillon canceled at the last minute. Uh, so we're Because gonna... he was at the Ice Cream Museum. Oh, yeah, he went to the Ice Cream Museum. <laughs> he canceled our fucking podcast, so you go to the Ice Cream Museum. Um, but, no, really, uh, we tried, and... Uh, you know, and if you try, you people can't criticize. I will never listen to this episode. I, I haven't listened to any single episode of our podcast ever. Well, you've like edited them, right? I mean, I enough to the extent that I make sure the audio is synced up and that, yeah, and yeah. then I run everything through a, I don't know, some kind of fucking filter or something. Uh-oh. And then, uh, but I spend most of the work on like the, the middle part, the break. The middle part's always a hit. Is it? Yeah, people love it. They like tweeted us like, "What was that?" You think every part of this show? I'm, you know what? I think this show is great. We had two breaks on this one. I'm gonna kill it with the middle parts. There's gonna be good middle parts. So that's what. (laughs) Stay tuned or rewind and listen to them again because they're gonna be great. I'm telling. I know I said that, um, and I know it's been bad. If you're like hanging tough through this, uh, I apologize. But I, we completely forgot. We got to talk about uh, Steve Jobs' doctor. Uh, yeah, he's just yeah. Basically, yeah, just threw Steve under the bus. Said that Steve basically killed himself because he had the pancreatic cancer. You can survive from yeah the good kind, which is normally like a death sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he was like, yeah, I'm just gonna do like yoga. And drink, no, and like drink smoothies milk. yeah, yeah. <laughs> drink muscle milk and smoothies and he went to like jamba juice to try and uh 
to get try and, cancer. To try and fix it. We were riffing about this outside, and we thought it was so funny. <laughs> that we had to bring it up. To, we had to bring it up. <laughs> we forgot that. Maybe we'll edit this part into how it was before. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll bump this part forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think maybe don't do an interstitial, like have it like people think the home improvement theme song is gonna come on, and then we're gonna be like, anyway, and yeah, then yeah, yeah, we're yeah, back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we'll trick them into thinking it's over, but then they look at the time code, and there's still another 20 minutes. But I mean, I think it's all relevant because you know, there's that other bitch, the turtleneck bitch, <laughs> with the health company that just yeah, got yeah, busted. Yeah. Thermo, yeah, yeah. Therm, thermos yeah thermostat. You, you had a tweet about her voice it's, i i didn't even realize she sounded like she that. sounds bizarre <laughs> when everybody in the world deserves to she have sounds like this everybody they all now the cat's thrown up because i'm doing the voice do you hear that was that puke yeah that's puke that's what the cat sounds like when it's when it's vomiting oh my god yeah everybody in the world deserves health care you know who should get cancer that lady she should. Yeah. Uh, Her and Shkreli. Okay. So top 10 startups. If you had to do a startup right now, uh-huh. we've been talking for two and a half uh-huh. hours. We're, we're out of cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. We've finished it. So I feel like it's only fair that we continue the last part of the podcast. Yeah. 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 This is the part it. of like the cocaine experience where we talk about how we, we have ideas to make yeah, a lot yeah. of money. So uh, we're going to go, we're doing startup battle. You guys have seen uh-huh. roast battle on comedy central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great show. It's like shark tank meets roast battle. Yeah. Shark tank meets roast battle. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. He pitches an idea real quick and it's all improv. You know, you yeah, have yeah, to, yeah. that's the, that's the, actually, you know what? Holy shit. I might actually pitch this TV show. I think that's a good idea. I think it is a good Shark idea. Tank battle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we could sell that to True TV. Yeah, of course. That's They'll a great put, idea. They, so let's do a know. sample episode right now. You come on and you, yeah. so it's Luis J. Gomez is hosting always uh-huh. the, the fake Puerto Rican round sake, Luis J. Gomez. Yeah, yeah, he's like, he, all right, uh, Adam, uh, the faggot Friedland. <laughs> oh, he got yeah. me. Fuck faggot. <laughs> uh, what's your startup idea? And then you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My, my startup idea, uh, it's an old one that I came up with, with my friend Michael Foodie once, but it's a man manhole cover. And it's a butt plug that has a manhole cover on it. And so it's, yeah, so it looks like a... Like a manhole cover butt plug. So it's like literally covering a man's hole. Okay, good startup <laughs> idea. Good startup <laughs> idea. Uh, uh, judges, what do you think? And then they... You know, uh, Rich Voss. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's that's the worst fucking idea I've, I've heard. I'm fucking, you fucking Indian piece of shit. Jeff no. Ross. <laughs> I don't know. I can't... Jeff fucking. Ross, Rich Voss. They have like the same name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They do. Um... So, uh, yeah, I what's guess, yours? Okay. Well, you did a real one. So, and then I already mentioned on my podcast, uh, on the podcast, the idea I had for the laser pointer that looks like the Batman logo for a cat, but it comes with a, a costume for your cat. It's a really good idea. That is a good idea. Maybe I could sell that to true TV. I think that could be a pet rock kind of a, like million dollar novelty item idea that could change the world. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so okay, you've all heard about headlights for a car, right? Yeah, yeah. But what about headlights when you're just walking around on the street? Oh yeah. So it's two giant fucking lights to strap to your head, and it draws power from your iPhone, and then you can see where you're going at night. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, like a f- spelunking, like yeah, like those you know, honestly, headlamps. that's like half of Ben Benjamin Franklin's inventions were just bullshit like that, and everyone like they're like Benjamin Franklin, a statesman, inventor, and it's yeah, like, well, yeah. None of his inventions are worth a shit. None of them. What? It, like, with oh, electricity. I'm thinking of Jefferson. Jefferson had some inventions. Like what? Like, Slavery? Uh, well, he invented dog <laughs> I style. patented a system to uh, make an infinite amount of children. Uh, uh, there, it might be a little dark, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a brand new system. It involves uh, oh, chains and a lot of lube. Oh. Just don't inhale, dude. Don't smell it. You got to breathe through your mouth. That's okay. Your, okay, my startup idea. Go. It's a tube that reroutes the air you breathe through your nose yeah. into your mouth. Yeah. And it has a switch on the side of your nose. Uh-huh. So you can turn it on. And then if something smells bad, you're, oh, that smells bad. And you turn it on and then the air just goes in your mouth and it bypasses your olfactor. Oh, so you could just like block your entire nose. Yeah, this is like 23rd century body mod kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, That's I the like stuff that. stuff that they're going to be doing in the future. I like that, yeah. yeah. You could just become like nasal anytime you need yeah like just you could talk like like woody allen you know yeah 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 because you wouldn't have do you think like do you think bernie sanders has uh breathed out of both nostrils anytime in the last like 45 years no 
That's why I supported him because he had a deviated he had allergies. septum. <laughs> he yeah. clearly had allergies. Um, business ideas? Yeah. Um, uh, okay, about, I got one. I got one. Yeah, yeah. So you know how firefighters, they have poles in the firehouse uh-huh. so they can get downstairs quicker. Uh-huh. Uh, hello, why doesn't everybody have that? <laughs> it's just no stairs. Fire, yeah, firefighter no poles more stairs. for everybody. everybody I always wondered, one. do firefighters like cl- climb up the poles? Yeah. No, dude. Dude, there's never an emergency where they have to go back to the firehouse real quickly. So they never have to go upstairs? No, they take the stairs up, but then they ride the, they slide the pole down. Oh. So there's, the stairs only are good for going up. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. You know what was a great invention? Uh, Velcro. Oh, incredible. Yeah. Was that one of those NASA inventions? Probably. All the bullshit NASA ever invented just wound up at Sharper Image. Yeah, yeah. We said this. Did we? We talked about that. Oh, man. I'm just running through old bits. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. That's that's my life. All right. No, we got to have... We got 10 more minutes, dude. We got (laughs) to... Until we got to come up with a couple more startup ideas. The the listeners stayed with us through all of this. They need these startup ideas. How about... um, How about like an app... That just you know how like they're different streaming services like Hulu and Netflix and you know like and if you like think of a movie you're like oh I really want to know if it's streaming mm-hmm. what about an app that just aggregates all of that and then just tells you they have that if you Google anything it'll show you what streaming <laughs> services on how about this so like Shazam but yeah for movies. Oh, right? that's good. So let's say you're like in the movie theater and you're watching a movie and you're like, what movie am I watching? <laughs> you just hold your phone up and then your phone, the light comes on. It yeah, says yeah. detecting movie now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ch- I got an idea. Yeah. So you know how like people post how about like, Shazam? Facebook status? Wait, hold on. Shazam, but yeah. for people's races. Uh huh. So you're in the workplace, right? And you're like, oh, uh, Latricia, I got this great joke. And you're like, wait a second. And then you pull your <laughs> phone out and she? then it scans her face and it's like, uh, Dominican. And you're like, never mind. And then you go back oh, in your office. Oh, that's a good idea. All right. So you know how like Facebook has like you could post statuses, uh-huh. but then they have like events and then they have like photos, like albums and all that stuff. How about just the statuses, mm-hmm. but then like with a character limit. So like a website that you could just like 140 characters and you could just post statuses on. Mm. That's I don't think that would work. Really? Yeah, I don't think that would be All successful. Right. Well, okay. You know, I like every like two years, like they're like Twitter's getting rid of the character limit, <laughs> and then no one knows who where yeah, those yeah, stories yeah. come from, and they never do. They never do. And I always complain about it. You want more characters? No, I don't. No. I think that would ruin the joke format. Right. Yeah. That's the fun part about Twitter. Is yeah. You have to make it being succinct. Simple. Yeah. Uh, brevity is the soul of wit. Mark Taking Twain. the fat off. Yeah. Mark Twain said that, dude. Mark Twain? Yeah. Mark Twain, who believes mm-hmm. that so much that he changed, he shortened his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how about, how about a, an app that, um, no, nah, nothing. Uh-huh. No. The cat is viciously eating, eating its, its own, own asshole. asshole. Right. Yeah. Now. Imagine if Brandon were here, how <laughs> upset he'd be about this. Fam, I'm crying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wish I could have uh, just used this time to riff out the Star Wars jokes for that birthday party I thought I was doing. Um, I was well, thinking about, like, you know, Chewbacca? Yeah. Is he, why doesn't he wear clothes? How do they know not to eat Chewbacca? Because um, he has, like, arms and legs, you know? He's like a guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I, Chewbacca's a guy. The, how many you know? Chewbaccas do you think they ate before they were like, all right, they, they're people? Uh... I mean, isn't that the thing is like, they're, all, they're a bunch of aliens that they're like, oh, that's a guy. That's yeah. not like a monster. Yeah, but he doesn't wear clothes. He just screams all the time. He has that belt thing around his chest. Yeah, he has a bandolier, the ba- <laughs> which makes him like a Zapata type of yeah, character. Yeah, he's I guess. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what if he's got like, the, he's growling, but it's in like a Mexican accent. Like if you could translate it, because he's like a Mexican revolutionary. That's yeah. why he has that bandolier. I loved uh, in episode three where... They like, you know, it, the movie's just not ending and it needs to end. Mm-hmm. And then there's a part where uh, where Yoda's like on the planet with the Wookiees and he's like, goodbye, random Wookiee number one yeah, yeah. and Chewbacca. Yeah, yeah. And then everyone, all the nerds in the theater are like, yeah, yeah, yay, yeah. we got him in there. Yeah. No, they were doing that in the in the Force Awakens too, though. Were they? Yeah. They were just they like throwing like, in cameos. cameos. They, they put everybody in there. The movie sucked. Now that I got some distance it from it. 
It really wasn't. I good saw at all. it in the theaters. It was very exciting and fun. My big joke when that movie came out was like, "Okay, guys, who's excited to find out why C three PO's got that red arm?" Because that was like a cliffhanger, <laughs> right? Yeah, people got mad arm. at you. Yeah. Well, no, and then immediately after that, I saw like an, an article or two that was like, "What's up with C three PO's <laughs> red arm?" And I'm like, I guess that's not a joke. Oh, I was trying to do it because you know how all the characters are racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like, you know, so C three PO. I think initially the reason why he's gold and his name sounds so much like CP, uh, like CPA, yeah, yeah, is because he was he's supposed an accountant. To be, yeah, he's supposed to be like a Jewish accountant <laughs> character, and it's like, oh, which planet are we going to now? <laughs> Don't make me run. I have asthma. I thought he was like and an then, effete British man. Yeah, well, the, uh, that's and then they made George change it. They were like, George, you've gone he after can't. Jews too much in this, and he's he like, can't. what if he is a faggot? And they were like, okay, perfect. We'll just make him. <laughs> We'll make him gay. I pointed this out. That actually is a bit that I used to do about C-3PO is like that character is completely unnecessary because like C-3PO's whole, the whole purpose for having C-3PO yeah. is that he translates shit for them. Right. But the only time he's really translating is in Jabba's palace, right? When uh-huh. they're talking yeah. to Jabba the yeah. Hutt, who just speaks pig Latin. Like everything he says is like, uh, me no let Tiano solo go. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, yeah, why? We have no idea what that means. <laughs> but somehow we understand the fucking dog, the <laughs> Chewbacca. We understand this they grunt. Just, yeah. They understand R2D2, who just speaks beeps. They all learned robot. Everyone learned they beep. all learned that like R2 is like, but they never learned they're like R2, yeah. And then they don't they don't know Pig Latin. But also if they have the technology to make robots speak, why not just make R two D two speak? Yeah, right. Why have two Why robots? does C-3PO allowed to speak, but R2-D2 has to be a beep guy? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I was saying it's because <laughs> R2-D2 in the original script says nothing but racial slurs. Oh, that's... Oh, because he's just cussing he's, the whole yeah. time. And then they meet Lando and R2-D2 is like, boop, 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 boop. They're like, Jacob, keep it down. <laughs> Shut up, dude. Yeah. Um, he's cool, man. Yeah, and that's... Uh, that's ba- Oh, Donald Glover's playing Lando. He's playing young Lando in the... Is he? Yeah. Oh, in the like the like prequel one? Yeah, I guess. They're gonna they're gonna make so many of those movies Disney, and they're yeah. all gonna be so fucking bad. It was really bad. Yeah. It's it just you know what it it's was, becoming the Simpsons, dude. It's, it's becoming, becoming really, like Ocean's Eleven. It's like yeah. we have a very complicated plan and nothing's gonna go wrong. Yeah. We're gonna execute it perfectly. They're making it all girls Ocean's Eleven. Did you know that? Are they? Oh yeah, like Ocean Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had to get. Did them we joke about that on the podcast? Seven. Yeah, I was like, it takes seven cents fourteen women, dollar. and they have to figure out how to change the oil in a car. <laughs> <laughs> That's the two hours. I I still think a sketch we didn't make that we was a joke we made on the podcast was Ocean's Not Eleven. Yeah. Um, that would be good. I mean, Drew Michael's cartoon is great. Everyone loves that, and that's like a really juvenile idea. Yeah. I, I yeah I dig it. I think we recovered, dude. I think this last segment that was, was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah that was all right. Good stuff. Um, but we are legitimately the SD card is filled. Okay, let's go. Um, yeah. Good night, everybody. Bye.